Friday. It's our uh, vacation starting yesterday, Thursday. So anyways, andito tayo ngayon sa Peter, Peterborough. Kasi sasakay tayo ng boat na yung, makikita nyo mamaya kung ano yung kaganapan ng boat, boat na to. Anyways, um, andito tinan mo. It's a very quiet place. Ayan. Very nice. Tingnan mo. Ayan. Kikita nyo mga kapatid, ayan. Tapos merong ano, tingnan mo. Mga boat and doon. Ayan. So, sasakay tayo dyan. Isa sa mga boat na yan. Pero hindi yung boat na maliit. Maliit pa rin yung sasakay natin. Pero ano. Ito, merong sinasabing Thanks for visiting Peterborough District Pathway of Fame. Honor honoring our heritage. Okay, so ito. It's maliit na place lang ang Peterborough guys mga kapatiran pero maganda pa rin kahit it's a quiet place Ayan. and doon yung boat titignan natin kung may bayad ba yung uh, uh, from 6 Monday to Friday from 6.30am to 6pm 150 each hour daily maximum is 10.50 so ayun ba babayad tayo para hindi tayo ma matikitan pero maya maya na what we gonna do is uh, we will pay first and then uh, we'll see and doon yung boat sasakyan natin so magbabayad muna tayo and then we'll pay for the parking kasi baka mato yung sasakyan natin okay mga kapatiran andito kasama ko yung asawa ko, yung anak ko at saka yung apo ko yan, nandito sila hi CJ hi baby ayan, yung makulit namin na apo oh my god, may B B na naman nag okay hi mga kapatid um, nagbayad na tayo doon ang per uh, person it's 29.75 tax included tapos ang bata is 4 below it's $3.50 so I paid $92.50 for the 3 adults and 1 child so ito yung, ito yung lighthouse lunch and grill parang restaurant and then ito yung mga boat Tapos papunta na tayo doon kasi sabi ng babae has to be 12.15 We have to be there kasi alauna yung alis ng boat So keep on watching See you there And we'll see kung maganda bang experience itong pupuntahan natin ngayon Okay so Ayan yung mga boat na yan Merong for sale doon isa O oh, baka sinong may gusto bilhin nyo pero kami hindi namin kaya bilhin yan wala kaming pera that's too expensive ayan yun may mga to I don't know if they're coming with the boat may aso dala sila and then andoon na yung mga ibang tao naghihintay ayan sabi ng babae we gonna call our names ayan nagbabayad na yung iba doon yung parking area ayan doon nakapark yung sasakyan and the parking is $1.50 per hour so binayaran natin ng 4 hours hanggang 4 o'clock 4 o'clock ba yun? mga kapatid yan ang sasakyan natin left lock uh, cruise ayan, ang ah, 1 o'clock yung alis natin okay, so uh, maya maya magtawag na yan sila sa mga pangalan na nakasasakay dyan tapos for a while pinapakain ko na itong apok ko kasi gusto
today. We're going to be pulling away from our dock here in a few moments. Before we get very far off the dock, though, we've got some very stringent rules, as most places do. Transport Canada wants us to keep social distancing. That's why we have rows of chairs between each group. Also, you have to keep your masks in place uh, all the time you're on the cruise. If you do get up to move around, though, of course, you have to have your masks on. If you go down to the uh, canteen and you get a snack or a drink or something, of course, once you sit down, you can start to consume it. You don't have to wear your mask when you're eating. That's uh, kind of silly. We are social distancing. With that out of the way, welcome to Peterborough. Peterborough is a rather unique community in the fact that it's built on one of the longest inland water routes in North America, which stretches from Lake Ontario to Georgian Bay. And we're pretty well right in the middle of it. Peterborough's had a lot of firsts. You know, we had hydroelectric power delivered to the city of Peterborough back in 1884. There was electric street lights as well as electric streetcars. This was produced by a generating plant still operating today, just on the other side of Quake Roads up here on the right hand side. In fact, to get into this area years ago, you had to travel by water. That was the only way to get in here back in the mid part of the 1800s. People used to travel on Lake Ontario by boat to places such as Coburg. From Coburg, they cross about 24 miles of Corduroy Road to Rice Lake. And from Rice Lake, they could board the old steamboat. So it would bring them across Rice Lake, up the 22 miles of the Autonomy River through Lock 19, across the lake behind us to be dropped off at this very building in front of us. Here, or building in front of us, sorry. There was a steamboat waiting station in front of us. They took it down 10 years ago. I should have taken that out of my commentary. Should have treats that are shipped all over the world from right here. A little farther up the river, past Quake Roads, is Trent University. And at Trent University, the waterway splits. Now, most of the water falls down over several dams, past Quake Roads, under the bridge, and then out in the lake behind us. Well, a small portion of the water, though, is diverted at Trent University. It continues to the east side of Peterborough, down over the giant hydraulic lift locks, through a conventional flood lock, and eventually in a little lake on the far side. It was in the late 1800s that a man named Richard Birdsill Rogers decided that the only way to overcome the 77 foot drop or 23 meter change in elevation around Peterborough was to build a canal around it. And that's the canal we're gonna travel on today. As we travel out around the waterway today, if my driving makes you a little bit nervous, we do have a fully stocked bar on board. This one is very important. Lots of cool drinks as well as coffee, tea, and other soft drinks. And if I scare you really badly, next to the bar on the lower deck, we also have washrooms. So I think we're pretty well prepared for the next uh, next hour and 45 minutes or so that we're going to be on the water. Our vessel, the Island Princess, is licensed by Transport Canada. We are certified by the Canadian Coast Guard to do trips just as we are doing today. On board, we have life jackets and life-saving equipment deemed necessary for a voyage of this nature. These are stored in different areas around the vessel, in the upper deck midship, in behind the compartment doors, and on the lower deck in a life jacket cabinet marked life jackets. Now, if we needed these, we quickly hand them out, but fortunately, the majority of the area that we will travel through today really only has a couple of feet of water in under the keel of the vessel. It's actually very shallow where we travel, especially up through the canal system. So if you do end up in the water, stand up. <laughs> As we leave our dock behind us, you can see over the top of the marina building on your right-hand side, the white triangular structure. Normally, it's got a white canvas on it. That is the open-air amphitheater. This, of course, is where they hold all the concerts during the summertime. A very busy spot during the summer. This piece of property today called Del Crary Park, named after one of our local radio and TV celebrities, Del Crary. But for many years, this piece of property was also known as Hospital Point. Because back in the early days, of course, the only way to get to this area was by water. And people traveling here from other countries oftentimes would spend weeks or months on vessels before they finally arrived here in Peterborough. When they did finally arrive here, they would be quarantined on this piece of property. Quarantine is actually the Latin word for the number 40, because, well, that's how many days they'd be held here before being let out in the general public. How did that sound? I just made that up. As we leave our dock behind us, you can see over uh, floating in the center of the lake. Well, this is one of the smallest lakes on the Trent Severn Waterway, I should add that. It's known as Little Lake. In the center of it, two floating devices, one of them the Peterborough Centennial Fountain, which is up and operating. First placed here in 1967. A free float, well I shouldn't really say first place here, when they installed this fountain years ago, they did so by installing it deep in the bay, way over on your right hand side, very close to those homes over on what's known as Crescent Street. It was in fact so close to the homes over there that on a breezy day, oftentimes the mist from the fountain would carry right over the tops of all of those houses. Now the people that lived over there used to complain almost daily to the city that, well apparently they felt they were getting a second shower as they headed off to work each morning. But nothing was ever done about their complaints until the same mist from that fountain started to drift in behind the maple trees, way over on your right hand side, into what's known as Little Lake Cemetery. Over there, I understand, it slowly started to erode away at the headstones. And, well, I don't know who's over there, but they started to complain. And the city quickly moved the fountain out about a thousand feet from shoreline, where it is today. 
Now, one of the very first people to inhabit this area, which we call Peterborough, is a man named Adam Scott, who arrived here in the very early 1800s. When he arrived in this area, he found it covered with huge white pine trees. And the only people moving back and forth through this area at that time were those of our native people as they moved back and forth between Lake Ontario and Georgian Bay, using this water route as their natural transportation route. As time went on, Adam Scott decided to build a mill, and a small community began to grow around this mill, which they started calling Scott's Plains. And it kept that name for quite a number of years. just a young guy and his father came along a couple of weeks later and thanked me for saving his life because the poor guy was in terrible distress when I got to him. And that kind of stopped my breath for a second there when I saw that guy. All I was thinking is how the heck am I going to pull that guy out of the water? He's a big guy. As we uh, turn the corner though we're heading into the very first lock in the beginning of the canal which stretches around Peterborough. First opened in July of 1904. Even the concrete up here changes color drastically. That's because much of it is well over a hundred years old from this point on. As we pull into the chamber, you see these long black cables hang down over the lock walls. We're going to loop our lines around these cables to support ourselves as we uh, close the gates behind us. Watching carefully behind us right now, you see them walking around in circles as they unwind the cables. This will allow the gates to close in a V position, pointing upstream. So as the weight of the water begins to build on the face of the gate, this will actually force to be a tighter shut. In the mid-1960s, they modernized and quite a number of the locks along the waterway. They took out some of these large wooden gates and put in aluminum ones. They took out the mechanism for opening and closing the gates and put in electric hydraulics. Now we're in the lock behind us, the lock we are in, the five locks for instance from Trent University all the way to Lakefield. They're still all manually operated locks, as they have no plans to modernize these. We can plan to keep them as manually operated lock indefinitely. Now most of the locks along here look just like this one. It's considered a conventional flood lock. We also have several flight locks. Peterborough has the giant hydraulic lift locks. One of two lift locks along the Trent Severn Waterway. Six of them worldwide, two of them in North America, and both of them are on this waterway. The second one, I don't know if you've been there, it's a little farther north and west, past Bedlam Falls and Balsam Lake, and headed towards a spot known as Kirkfield. There they've got a little shorter lift, only 49 feet in lift, and towers built out of steel rather than the concrete, which they used here in Peterborough. And then, as you continue by boat through Lake Silcombe, through a really start out towards Georgian Bay, you'll come to yet one other completely unusual structure, which is known as the Marine Railway. The Marine Railway itself is totally different. It is a large steel box car about the size of this chamber. It's on a railway track, it's lowered down over a hill into the water, bolts are driven inside the box car, secured, and then the entire box car with its contents of vessels is hauled up high and dry up into the water over a hill and out into the lake on the opposite side. We won't see that one today though, it's a long distance up the waterway from where we are. Watching carefully in front of us right now, you can see they're just starting to wind the valves open. As she turns the crank, it drives a shaft straight down behind the gate in front of us. 
opening or activating what's known as a gate valve. This is basically just a trap door on the base of the gate in front of us. As that gate valve opens, water from the upper reach will flow under the gate through the valve and into the chamber, and we will slowly begin to rise. In essence, this is why they call it a flood lock. As they open the valves, they flood the water in, and on the return trip, they will flood the water back in again. It only take us about 12 or 13 minutes to rise about 12 feet or 4 meters in this lock. Upstream the things that you say Tell me I'm being honest Tell me did you know That you would be leaving me Just like the winners know Tell me I'm being honest Tell me should I know out of the canal in front of us, they can start widening the gates open. Even if there's only an inch difference in water, it's almost impossible to get those gates to move. No, no, no. They say time is a healer, just you wait and see. the old scowl or barge here and you're right outside you look down towards the building down you can see some of the new timber that's already uh, some of it's been cut they've got a mill in there a planer which is uh has a 45 foot bed on it they can claim the logs from one end to the other the operator rides the chair from one end to the other because when they uh, stack these logs they've got to be water tight so they've got a nice smooth finish on it In the late 18, early 1900s when they built the canal through the area, R.B. Rogers, the man that designed and built the Peterborough lift locks, had a young sister whose name was Mariah. They named the street and the bridge in front of us after his youngest sister. It is called the Mariah Street Bridge. As you can well imagine, during the summertime of a tremendous number of pleasure craft that travel through the waterway, this bridge will sometimes swing several times an hour, tying up traffic in both directions for an awfully long distance. But you know, the people in Peterborough, they are a very patient bunch. They'll quietly sit in their cars here for five or ten minutes at a time, listening to radios, talking amongst themselves. In fact, oftentimes as we travel through here, they'll take but a moment, roll their windows down, and even wave at us. Oddly enough, though, sometimes with only one finger extended. But if that happens, it's just a friendly Peterborough greeting. You want to just smile and wave back. I'm sure they're just being friendly. Tell me, did you know that you would be leaving me just like the winners know? Tell me I'm being honest. Tell me, should I know?
quiet and slow I try my best to move on Letting go Now we're going out. So look at the bus. Now it's the extra flood of water in that other chamber which causes that chamber to come down and turn causing us to rise. Once he opens the crossover valve, gravity does everything else. This is still the highest hydraulic lift locks in the world, with only two of them in North America, the one here in Peterborough, and the second is in Kirkfield, a little farther up in the system. But this is the highest one, 65 feet or 19.8 meters. And like I say, unlike the other uh, lock we went through, they can move traffic in two directions, but I don't see any boats in the other chamber. It wouldn't matter how many boats are in either chamber, because the vessel displaces its own weight in water. That's uh, Archimedes' principle. As we rise right now, don't worry about a little bit of shaking from time to time. It is 117 years old. <laughs> a few things that have been changed over the years. The end gates holding back the canal water in front of us. The end gates on each end of the chamber now built out of aluminum, replacing the original gates, which were steel. And way down below us on either side, you can see the pavement leading at the base of the lift locks is a tunnel that runs right through the area in front and below where we are right now. A tunnel large enough to accommodate even a city bus. Do you want to walk to the back with me in the back? Mm-hmm. You don't want to. Okay, Musaka, what's that? It's a bungalow. Ari na puta, ari diri puta mo, sale na ko. Oh my god, this is amazing. Uh-uh. Huh? We're still going up. Yeah, and then we go there. Inakyat kami sa taas. Tapos and i open yung gate na yan. Tapos mag sale pa punta doon. Oh my god, this is amazing. Guys, it's a road. At ayan yung mga kotse nakita nyo lumalabas. Ayan. Sa ilalim is as a, a road. Ayan, i-open nila yung 
gate na yan. Magsisail tayo po sa gabi. Yes. opening as the gate slowly opens in front of us water rushes in around either side of the gate charging this chamber with an extra foot of water so we're going to rise the last foot inside this chamber before we are ready to exit Oh, mula level saya di situ tarong. Teng agit dah. Ang 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 bridge nak pulak sih, no? Hmm. Oh, tak suka bridge ni ha? Tu yuk na. Oh. We have risen a total of 77 feet, or about 23 meters, from Little Lake to the point where we are now. The canal ahead of us stretches for several kilometers, where it eventually joins back to the river. Oh my god, we're Trinity back in the river. Now, the man that designed the built the Peterborough lift box, R.V. Rogers, oh, born right here in Peterborough, yeah. educated at Trinity this College the, oh in Toronto, and the Yale University in Montreal, where he earned his engineering degree. When he returned to Peterborough in the late 1800s, he was given the government appointed position.
na mga kapatid, bababa na tayo. Nakita nyo yan, ayan. Bababa na tayo. Para mag-level tayo doon sa tubig sa baba. Ayan. Naa-amaze talaga ako. Ito daw, it's malaki daw. So expensive to build this. tayo. Tita nyo. Ayan, galing tayo dyan sa taas. And then, bumaba tayo. Ayan. Bumaba na. You see? Ayan, bumaba na tayo. Magli-level tayo sa tubig doon sa baba. Ayan. Kita nyo. Bababa, bababa tayo. Ayan. Bababa na tayo. level na tayo doon sa tubig na yan. Tinan mo? Ay, para mag- para ano pang isa lang, diba? Para umakyat tayo. Sila naman ang bababa. Tayo nang bababa. Sila ang akyat. Parang ano, balance. Ayan, umakyat din siya. Mga kapatid, ayan. Para tayo ay mag- As the other chamber rises beside yeah, us, you can see how far it is up there. And then tayo ay baba pa. The balance of the cylinder. A little different perspective from the sound. Oh my god, you see that? Tapos magli-level tayo doon. Na-level na tayo. Bubuksan na niya yan. And then mag-sail back tayo doon. Isn't that how amazing? sa taas. Nakita nyo yung tao dyan. Ayan. Dyan tayo sa taas. Dyan tayo sa taas, diba? Isida ito so amazing. Ayan. 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 As they pull the pins out of the corner of the gates in front of us, they'll bounce the chamber, open the gate, and we will lose that extra foot of water that brought us to the top of the bottom. We just drain the water for fun for the magleder. Tapos bubuksan nila yan. Yung ano yung bridge na yan para maka labas tayo. Although the water may heads north and west eventually head towards Georgian Bay, it does drain a watershed for nearly 100 kilometers farther from north of us, all the way up into what we know as the Halliburton Highlands. When the logging industry came through this area in the very early part of the 1800s, they logged all the huge white pine from this part of the country, dropped that timber onto the watershed, threw it down the minute of mills, which were springing up along the new communities here. As the timber was pulled out of the water, it was cut into square timber, put back in the water, raft together, and continued downstream. Eventually, all the way out to Lake Ontario, and then on to Montreal, where much of it was loaded on the larger ships and exported to Europe. That's where much of our huge white pine went for the building trade. As the years passed, and they completed the shorelines around the main channels in Trent. They moved farther afield, back into those northern lakes, the Halliburton Highlands. 
when they started logging those areas, they quickly realized a lot of the small creeks and rivers that drain that watershed down into these ones were rather shallow. In fact, they virtually dry up during the summertime, making it almost impossible to move logs. So the logging industry, being very creative, went back into the northern areas, started putting in dams on those lakes. As the ice and snow would accumulate over the course of the winter, in the spring it would melt. The dams holding the water back would create vast reservoirs of water enabling the logging industry at any time during the season to go back into those northern areas and uh, open up the dams and create a flood situation to drive logs out into deeper waters. When the logging industry left the area, they left all those dams intact. And although you have about 45 locks along the waterway, there are 162 dams that control the watershed, not only the Trent Southern Waterway, but also the Halliburton Highlands. Now during July and August, where we've normally had very little precipitation, Parks Canada can go back into those northern areas, open up the dams, siphoning the water off into these ones, keeping these waterways at a constant level. However, people are cottage back in those northern areas are very much against this because oftentimes they will lose anywhere from four, eight, even as much as ten feet of water to their lake. Oh, yeah, that we're traveling in right now is known as the Kawarthas, a native word which used to be pronounced Kawartha, like that shining water is by our native people. The English added the art of the name to make it a little easier to say, but it still means the same thing. And just ahead of us on your left-hand side, the next long sandy beach you see is property that at one time was owned by Sir John A. Macdonald, our first Prime Minister of Canada. This was a farm that he owned while he was Prime Minister. The house used to stay over there once more. Today that house has long since been torn down. The property today is owned by the city of Peterborough. It is known as Beaver Beach Park. It's named after the two creeks that crawled around either side of the park. That's the Beaver the Beach Creek. Not only did they have a long sandy beach over there, they got a playground for the kids, a covered and picnic area, five large songs, that's a host of many tournaments during the season, as well as a very large campground where you come and stay for the entire summer. Or if you're just a transient camp, you can stay for one or two nights. In 
Tris day wala na. Right.